Hey guys, Richard here with CRG Games. Uh, today I wasn't going to open any boxes, but I picked up um, a uh, Commander Legends box online, so I thought, you know, why not? I don't have anything better to do right now, and I'm tired of sorting cards. So, what I'm also going to be doing uh, while I open this box is talk a, a little bit about, I guess... How do we go about making money from this stuff? So, I sell on TCG, and I started out uh, in November of last year. Basically, just wanting to sell off some of my uh, personal collection, um, you know, some some older cards, some bulk stuff, you know, that kind of thing. And it kind of quickly turned into. Uh, you know, maybe we take this money that I'm getting from cards and reinvest it back um, into buying more product, you know, collections, things like that, and um, reselling that. So, um, I did that for, you know, basically all of November, from the middle of November on. And um, I want to say I probably sold in November... I don't know, maybe 500 bucks. It wasn't a whole lot, uh, but it was kind of like a proof of concept. I was like, man, I'm, I'm actually making a little bit on this because I didn't pay 500 bucks for all this stuff. So uh, I'm in the positive. Not a whole lot, but I'm in the positive. And I took that money um, and I went on, you know, our local, uh, you know, the Discord for our LGS and said, hey, looking to buy cards? Uh, bulk, you know, whatever you got, let me know and, uh, we'll meet up and we'll make a deal. So, um, I met up with a couple people, uh, purchased a couple cheap collections. Um, one was uh, a guy who hadn't played in a couple years and, uh, he kind of moved on to some other games. So, um, I paid $125 for about a thousand bulk rares, um, and probably 2,500 uh, bulk um, commons and uncommons, you know, lands, that kind of thing. So, first, of course, I take a look at what's in the um, collection. I thumb through the cards to make sure that I'm not buying, you know, something that I know uh, I'm not going to be able to make my money on. Or I'm, and that I'm not paying too much for it. Hey, a foil, Court of Ambition. Very nice. Always good when you get foil rares. Um, so I, I looked, you know, through the cards. They were pretty decent. Uh, you know, I, I noticed that there was a couple cards in there that were um, worth some money. And then, uh, you know, I offered the guy. I said, hey, you know, uh, this is what I pay for bulk. Um, about 5 to $7 per thousand commons and uncommons. Uh, rares I was paying, uh, I'm still paying, you know, between 7 and, and $0.10 cents per rare. Depending on whether um, the cards are pre-sorted. Uh, if I have to do all the sorting, of course, that takes time, so I charge for that. Um, so I made a deal, 125 bucks, And, uh, you know, I went home, started going through the cards, and I noticed that, hey, there's there's actually some, some good stuff in here. Um, a lot of stuff from Commander um, 2018 and Commander 2019. So there was a, a really a good amount of money in there, to be honest. Um, and I scanned all the cards, so I, I, I started out just, uh, you know, going through the cards by hand using the TCG uh, app and scanning them. That takes a lot of time. Um, and my phone, for some reason, it just doesn't like it. It, it appears iPhones uh, scan a little bit better than Androids, or maybe it's just mine. So um, I got a Fujitsu scan snap. Uh, about two months ago, and that has saved tons of time um, scanning cards. If you have uh, TCG Pro, um, you can use that function. So I scan all the cards, the rares, and you know, uh, mythics, and all the you know all the decent stuff I pulled out. That was really over a dollar. That added up. Man, I cannot get these. I cannot get these open. Uh, that added up to about 600 bucks. The commons and uncommons uh, were about another 200 bucks. Um, 
for you know a couple thousand uh, uh, commons and uncommons. I didn't scan any of the lands. I didn't scan any of the tokens and that kind of stuff. Um, so all in all, I'm around 800 bucks. That's market price. So what I do then is to figure out how much I'm going to make from that. If, assuming I sell all of the cards, hey, Scroll Rack uh, and Thought Vessel. That's two good pulls. Scroll Rack is, I think, around 14 bucks. Uh, I did just drop a little bit, but that pays for a couple packs. So I scan all the cards. I'm at about 800 bucks. I take a look at what I net uh, on the, you know, on the cards after all said and done. That shipping fees, and at the time, um, I didn't have TCG Direct, so I'd come home and I would have, you know, X number of orders to fill. So I'd pull those cards, ship them, yada yada. So I net at the time around 80 percent. Um, so you do the math, and I'm, I think I'm at, um, you know, what, probably five or six hundred bucks uh, after all that. So that is basically a four to one return. That's pretty good. Now, the commons and uncommons and stuff, it's the nature of them. They can take a long time to sell, especially if they're not in demand. Uh, but it's good to build the inventory regardless because a lot of them do slowly trickle out over time. And when you don't have a bunch of big cards, you know, just sitting in your inventory waiting to be sold, it's those little ones that can help make ends meet. You got to sell a lot of them, and it takes more time to you know, process, but it's bulk, and you can have a lot of them. So that's that's a good thing. It'll pad your inventory. Um, so then I have started more recently, um, after I uh, incorporated the business, you know, as an LLC, um, set up all my accounts and things like that, um, have been buying more product on Amazon. Now, I don't buy full price. I always look for deals. Um, you know, when Amazon's running their crazy, you know, $125 uh, collector booster sales, things like that. Um, when draft boosters go on sale for like 85 bucks, the prices generally aren't available for the general public. Um, but from what I understand, if you are, you know, maybe a new LGS and you don't have, uh, you know, you're not buying tons of product. 85 bucks is probably about what you get your cards for. Um, I just realized that I have a rare right there. So margins uh, are relatively thin if you're selling sealed product. However, once you crack a box and then you figure out what all of the commons and commons, you know, rares and mythics are worth, it can be worth it. So... For example, I bought three um, Zendikar Rising set boosters. I did those uh, box openings not too long ago. After scanning all the uh, rares, you know, and mythics, um, I came out to about. I was, I say I paid three hundred and sixty-six bucks right around there for the three boxes uh, after tax and shipping. I think uh, the rares and mythics were somewhere around $400, $450. And that's including the, um, uh, that is including the box topper, box toppers. I got two creeping tar pits in a, a verdant catacomb. So that was pretty neat. Two $5 cards. And I think verdant was like uh, 30, 40 bucks, somewhere in there. It's pretty good. So if I figured that I'm going to get probably about 80% of that, you know, maybe if I get 200 bucks out of it, I need to get, um, you know, another $100, uh, 150 bucks out of the commons and uncommons, which there are a lot of. I have not scanned any of them, actually. Um, it's, it's profitable. It's very slim. I didn't really get any crazy pulls on those, and I really didn't get that great of a price. What I regret the most is... Uh, you know, about a year ago when those boxes were, I don't know, what, 85 bucks for even set boosters? At one time, Amazon had those things so cheap. Uh, I wasn't doing what I'm doing now, though, so I didn't take advantage of that, and I regret that. When prices go that low, even if a set uh, doesn't have 
a ton of expected value, it can go up. And in this case, pathways have gone up, um, you know, a good bit. And that's one of the things that's driving the prices. Uh, a lot of other cards too. The Mythic Lands from Zendikar Rising are, uh, are, are pretty high um, right now. So that's what I was hoping to get, you know, a good bit of. And I did. I got a, I got a, a decent amount. Sphinx, Second Sun, that's pretty good. Um, no good, no really good hits right now, actually. So, uh, I bought those. Um, I bought uh, six of the uh, Midnight Hunt set boosters. Reason being, the, the, you know, the value is not the highest, but uh, the rare lands are pretty good. And, of course, you have the chance for Meat Hook Massacre. Now, on those, I paid maybe, I think I paid like 126 bucks or somewhere around there after shipping on that, on that sale. They had a limit of three per person, so I, I couldn't get any more. Um, but I did have a buddy help me out, and he, he was able to get me three more. So, I pulled uh, two Meat Hook Massacres, um, both extended art, one foil. Those right there uh, paid for more than one box, you know, more like one and a half boxes. I sold the one almost immediately for about $84.00. I think I probably netted uh, 70 or somewhere around there. Um, and then the rest, you know, after you hit that threshold where you, you know the boxes are covered, everything else is just profit. Because it's direct, uh, all I got to do is, you know, fill a, an invoice, um, usually every couple days. Or um, if I don't hit $300 in sales, which I haven't yet uh, in that time period, It'll go on to the next uh, scheduled um, invoice. So, fill up, my in, uh, fill up a box, send all those cards out to TCG. They go through them, make sure that uh, I'm sending what I um, say I'm sending and sending what they are asking for. And then they pay me. Um, it seems to take a little bit of time, you know, because they got to have somebody process all those cards. But it saves me on shipping. So now I'm not buying tons of envelopes. I'm not uh, doing tons of individual stamps. I got a printer so I can print directly on the envelopes. That saves time, saves money, because all I got to do is uh, have ink now. Um, yeah, and then send it out. They go through it, and then uh, there will be adjustments based on, um, you know, condition. If maybe something I thought was an airman, then they classify it as a... Uh, um, you know, light play, they will, uh, you know, charge for that, but I can get those cards back. So it's not like I lose them and then I'll just have to relist them at whatever, uh, they say it is, uh, condition they say it's at. So the best margins are going to come from buying collections. You need to pay around that bulk buy list rate. Um, and you just got to keep buying until you get, uh, you know, that one person that, you know, did a lot of drafts and whatever, and all the cards that they got, they just put them directly into a box, put it in the closet, and that's the last they saw of it. Until you come around. Those are the kind of uh, boxes you need to get. Because I think they have the highest chance of actually having decent stuff in them. Um, if you're buying from, uh, you know, someone that was a collector, you probably have a higher chance of getting, uh, you know, good cards from them. You're probably going to have to pay a little bit more. Um, but as long as you can stay close to those bulk, uh, buy list prices, you should be able to make money. The biggest costs are going to be time. Uh, really other than money, there's not really a whole lot you need, um, to buy and resell cards. Uh, you need some storage boxes, of course, to put everything. They do take up a lot of room. You know, a 5,000 count box is really heavy. It's kind of large, a little bit bulky. And uh, 5,000 cards seems like a lot, but it's really not. If you think, uh, you know, a, a normal draft booster box has about 540 cards in it. A set booster box, I believe, has about 360 you know, you open a couple of those and they add up pretty quick. Drafts, you might take home, you know, what, at least 50, 60 cards, somewhere around there. And if, um, you know, people give away their stuff at the end of the night, which, you know, sometimes at, uh, uh, you know, my LGS they do. 
that can add up even faster. Um, it is looking like this box is a dud and that I should have left it sealed. Uh, Commander Legends um, boxes are out of print. Uh, what I've been seeing is the last calls have been going out for anybody who wants to order them. Amazon still seems to have a good bit, but um, at $107, that's pretty cheap uh, for a product that's just loaded with value. Of course, you can get multiple rares per pack. You've got the Jeweled Lotus potential. You know, you've got um, Mana Drain. You've got uh, Vampiric Tutor. There's just so many good cards in the set that you can pull and uh, make your money back that that 107 price point is not going to stay very long that's going to slowly drift up when uh amazon's um algorithm algorithms uh take effect uh, if there's a lot of demand i would assume that uh you know the prices are going to tick up um training center that's the first land we got the chances of the prices going down from here are slim to none because right now, supply is only getting lower. Uh, demand, I don't know about that. Uh, demand has probably stayed pretty much stagnant for a while, I would have to think. you got to uh, realize that Commander Legends has been in print for a long time. This set came out, if I remember right, it was like November or December of 2020. And this is, uh, you know, these are pandemic era products. Um... I thought maybe that would result in a low supply, but it doesn't seem to have uh, done that. Man, this box is absolute uh, garbo. <laughs> Down to four packs left. The only thing we can hope for right now is, you know, like a, a tutor or, or mana drain or, uh, or uh, jewel lotus because uh, this box... If I were to sell every single common and uncommon, rare, mythic, all that stuff, after fees, um, I would hope to break even. I'm okay with that because this isn't my first job yet. I would like it to be. Uh, I'm working on that. It's taking a little while. Ah, staff. That's a good one. Uh, yeah, but not good enough. I think staff of domination is only between three and five bucks right now. Uh, you know, when that started out, I want to say it was like 15 or somewhere. Because um, I, I did open this product when it first came out. Um, but yeah, so basically my process uh, for acquiring cards and going through them is, uh, you know, checking on Facebook, Craigslist. Uh, I, I do check eBay every once in a while for bulk stuff. Um, you know, I'll contact people on Reddit every once in a while. Uh, my friends, you know, when, when they want to sell off a bunch of their bulk, uh, they usually come to me first, uh, which I really appreciate. Try to get them around buy list price, because if you don't, you're not going to make any money. Uh, margins aren't that great. But you can improve that by getting uh, down to buy list prices. So you get to buy list prices, and then you just put in... Uh, man hours you start sorting the cards either by hand or if you uh, have the ability you can sort them with uh, tcg quick list um, you can sort them with the app and export a uh, uh, um, a spreadsheet and then import that into tcg there's there's a bunch of different ways to do it uh, so it takes up a lot not a lot of time but you got to get there first man so the last pack um, I don't think I hit a card in here, maybe, let's see, over $10. I, I don't think there was anything in there over $10 bucks, uh, or, or close to it. However, the commons and uncommons, um, I need these for inventory, so I'm not, uh, I'm not too worried about it. Um, it's just one of those feels bad. Uh, Court of Cunning, I want to say that's a buck or two. Um, Tago and a Zara, Renegade Recruiter. Uh, I think Zara is actually pretty good. A uh, pretty good card um, by itself. Yeah, so that, that might be worth a couple bucks. I'll have to look that up. The the, the foiling is absolutely beautiful. The uh, the etched foiling. It's amazing. And the cards in the... Oop, that's heavily played now. Uh, the etched foil cards are 
basically straight as an arrow. So that concludes this box opening. Um, I've got six Zendikar Rising set boosters that are supposed to be arriving sometime soon. So I'm going to be opening those. Um, the cost on those is around 111 bucks. Uh, I think all six together was 711. So divide that by six, then divide that by, uh, uh, you know, 30 packs um, per box. I think I need to make uh, I need to pull around $4 in value um, per pack uh, to break even. So most of that's going to be um, Rares and Mythics, the uh, Expedition um, Box Toppers. I'm hoping, of course, to uh, get some good stuff there, but we'll see. This box uh, seems to have been a dud, but you get that sometimes. So I will catch you guys later. Again, this is Richard with CRG Games. You can check me out on tcgpro.crggames.com. Actually, flip that, crggames.tcgplayerpro.com. Um, I have all my prices on there, 5% below whatever the market price listing is. That way you can save a little bit of money. It helps me out a ton because I don't pay, uh, you know, the, the crazy commissions, the 10, 11% or, you know, whatever it is. Um, and I can get the, uh, of course, uh, get the cards out to you still. Uh, just as fast either um, uh, from uh, you know my place or uh, um, TCG uh, Direct. So I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.